I had to be taken into a place when I was writing this book, which was unbelievable. I'm just an ordinary person, like anybody else. I don't claim any great psychological insight, except that I've been taken to certain places, not that I wanted to go. And one of the things that I remember when I was writing this book about Jung, and I had to go literally through hell, literally, month after month after month, experiences I could never have conceived that a human being would have to go through. And this is a very, very, very ancient pattern of being asked, of being begged, of being forced to speak on behalf of another reality. He says, the, the spirit of the depths, you, you can always tell the imprint of the spirit of the depths because it smashes your ideals. So this isn't an ideal, it's not an idealistic spiritual quest, some noble something. It just rips your guts out. That is the spirit of the depths. How many people really want to go through the ordeal that's needed to be able to say something on behalf of the spirit of the depths. Nobody, because you don't do it unless you're forced to do it, unless you're grabbed by the balls, not by some pretty ideal. It shows you even that your spirituality, even your learning, everything you think you know belongs to the spirit of this time. That is what the spirit of the depths does. It always pulls the bottom out from underneath you. Be here now, the power of now. Fine to talk about it, but how the hell do you do that? And, and one of the points I try to make in this book is you cannot access the power of now until you go back into the primordial past to see where the now comes from. Otherwise, you're just skating along on the surface of existing, thinking that you're in the now, you're not. You're dreaming. You have a fantasy of being in the now. It's all a bloody illusion. We can't accept that the dead could be alive, and this is really, really one of the crucial elements in Jung's work, which is that the dead are not dead. They are more alive than we are. See, that's the game that Jung was involved in, the impossible. People who came after him, they got involved in the very other game, the very different game of the possible. But that is the spirit of this time. And we are no longer in contact with the spirit of the depths. Then we are co-opting the spirit of the depths, which is really the worst thing to do. So it's a bit like Christ, you know, and it's interesting how many times Jung compared himself to Christ. And he said, Jungian, the Jungian community is just going to do what the Christian church did. The fire and the spirit, that's what he said, is going to be gone. Within a generation, forget it. Institutionalization, he knew what was going to come. And of course, everything that he said worked out exactly as he said it would. I love the way that, especially towards the end of his life, he saw and was horrified by how even the people closest to him were completely clueless about what he was trying to do and how he actually predicted or prophesied that what he was really trying to do would be completely forgotten within a generation. So that's really what this book is about. It's to push us to the limit, remind us of our obligation as humans.